Welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and also on YouTube if you're watching this video later on for our next deck, which is going to be Gruel Stompy. I haven't played this deck in a little while, so want to try it again. Basically, we are you know being an aggro deck with our Explore package where we have our awesome three mana cards as well, very aggressive cards with Steel Leaf Champion and Gruel Spellbreaker. Where sometimes, if we're pretty fortunate, we get to play those right away on turn two with the help of Land of War Elves. Hey, hey Hawkeye. And <clears throat> besides that, we have them backed up. Oh, there you go. With our Mythic Flying Creatures with Rekindling Phoenix and Skargon Hellkite. And also, like, people can just block these Steel Leaf Champions and Spellbreakers, and that's annoying. So we, we have these Colossuses in here to help these creatures even get through for a lot of damage. So that's what our Colossus are in there for giving that plus four, plus two. The thing that's different this time that we didn't have before is before I actually wasn't playing Domri, I had fourth Colossus, fourth Hellkite in here. And, it, you know, I did just have like fours all the way across the board. But I wanted to try like two Domri for a little bit of card advantage here in the main deck. Uh, we still have a lot of creatures, I think 31. Yep, we saw 31 creatures. And so we'll, we'll see how the Domri's do, but the previous times we were playing it, we were playing four Hellkite, four Colossus. But there we go. We got some Gruel Stompy. How's your day going, Hawkeye? Just sitting around, eating some food. No, I think Angel of Grace is a better card than Aurelia. Uh, Trevor asked that earlier. Uh, we, our game that we won, game two that we won against Selesnya Tokens, we are not winning if we have Aurelia over Angel of Grace at all. Angel of Grace was very important there, but I, I don't really like. I don't think Aurelia is is very well positioned. No, not a whole lot of interaction, that's true. We're just, you know, trying to stomp our opponent. Play our big creatures out early and often. No land. We both mold the six. Turn two steel leaf. Pretty big. Pretty big. I think my opponent has a counter spell here. So I'm gonna have my worst creature, Branch Walker. I of course did not attack with Landwar Elf because of Trickster, but Alright, well that's a game. Yeah, that's yeah, that's gross, okay, I agree. Hellkite against Mono Blue? That's gross. So let's get all these harpooners in here. And that's about it. Domri out. Holding a feeling. What else out? I don't know. All these cards are pretty good. I mean, I could take out like a, a branch walker, but then that makes my wild breath walker worse. <laughs> it's more than a grooving. Nah, I don't want Cinder Vines for Obsession. All these cards are good. I don't. We don't need Cinder Vines for Obsession. I mean, I I guess I just trim a Steel Leaf or a, a Spellbreaker, and I guess that would mean Spellbreaker. It's either that or like Phoenix, but Phoenix is good. I don't know. That seems weird taking out Spellbreaker. We don't really have a card to take out here. The new, uh, they said the new update will be Wednesday, the twenty seventh at. 
5 a.m. Pacific, which is 8 a.m. Eastern, is one that's planning on coming through. I kind of kept this hand pretty quickly, TBH. Steel Leaf Champion looks like a long ways to cast that before we'll cast that with Double Mountain. This is just, like, on the draw with nothing to do until turn three against Mono Blue, I, I honestly probably should just mulligan this. Ah, uh, Harpooner would have been so clutch. Would have been so clutch. We would have drawn that. Yeah, I don't like cutting Spellbreaker or Steel Leaf either. There's just nothing else to cut. I don't think you go down on the Explore package because of how good Wild Growth Walker is in this matchup. And I do not want to take out Land War Elf. And I don't want to take out the Flyers. There's honestly nothing else to cut. No, the game's not over. The game's not over until they counter Hellkite. Had two counter spells. It's, it's whether or not they have this third one. So they they need a counter spell or a trickster. This game was was my fault for keeping the uh, keeping the hand on the draw with you know I just kind of instinctually just kind of kept like you know lands and spells kind of thing. It was not a good keep though. Should have mulliganed that. I kind of wanted just to play the Branch Walker on turn two. Of course, I want the Spellbreaker to be a 4-4. Anyway, I wasn't going to play it as a 3-3 haste. That's weird. They didn't even tap Spellbreaker. Come on, red source. Red mana. Yeah. Oh, right, they couldn't tap Spellbreaker. It was my turn. It had X-Proof. Those are valid points. Expecting a dive down. I 
I know they haven't had a, a counter spell here recently, but we just don't need to play the Hellkite there with like how far ahead we are now. That's not nice, King Toll. I don't like that. Yeah, my opponent did use bad bad manners last game with the good game, but that doesn't mean that uh they have sleep. Doesn't mean we need to re return the favor. Alright, Girl Stompy getting the first one. Even though I kept a bad hand that I should not have kept the second game. Third game was looking kind of bad for us, you know, with the two lands there, but then our, our deck drew land, land, and kind of went from there. Alright, what do we got? Try this out. Hopefully we get something to do on turn two. You know, against mono blue we'd be mulliganing this, but we don't know if we're playing against mono blue or not. pretty tough to win. I mean, we'll have to see what our opponent has. This could be tough to win. These Steel Leaf Champions are going to do a lot of work. They are not going to be blocked by a bunch of 1-1s and 2-2s. My opponent was like, what is going on here? Wild Growth Walker, Steel Leaf Champion, Rule Guild Gate. Our kinship. All right, well now they can block victory. I will lend you with my Amara strength. if they wanted if they want to chump block to save a Johnny. They can. Remember the 2-2 cannot block the Steel Leaf Champion. They'd have to just block with Amara. All right, they did. Uh, it'll be a lumbering battlement deck that we have later. We've not made the deck quite yet. One man away from being able to play Domri plus Spellbreaker or Champion. Deliver us to victory. That was pretty good. Attack. I'm becoming irritated. All right, so they did not chomp with the three-three. They let a Johnny take a big hit.
So if you're playing, so the question is why Steel Leaf over Chain Whirler? You know, Chain Whirler, you have to be a base red deck with a lot of red spells, Look obviously, because you need you triple red. Come. And we're going Steel Leaf because we get to be base green and have the Explore package in that scenario. Oh, opponent, make that make that attack. Come on, you can make that attack. They didn't do it. <clears throat> Alright, Johnny down. Until our paths cross again. And drawing the, the branch walker allows us to double spell, so let's go ahead and do that. Oh, I look forward to seeing you <laughs> running away. This ain't gonna be one of those quiet riots. Yeah, that token's gotten pretty big, thanks to a Johnny. So should I try to get Domri's ultimate, or do I like minus and look for more cards? You know, basically looking for like Hellkite. I could just minus minus, because then we have a new Domri. The ultimate is just make a 4-4 four four every single turn. I guess that's not bad. Yeah, I kind of want a minus minus. Look for creatures for Wild Growth Walker and stuff. Basically, how we lose this is like March of the Multitudes. So I go minus, my, or if, if I go plus, plus, then we get to ultimate. But then we won't have any other creatures. It's actually a tough call, honestly. Or minus. Did it take a gander? Nope. No geese nope. here. All right, there's Hellkite. Yeah, here's March. So, basically minusing because I want to find explore creatures for Wild Growth Walker. If we draw a land next turn, we can take out Domri and be able to uh, cast both Steel Leaf and Hellkite. Yeah, Flourish would certainly be bad for, for me. Maybe I just shouldn't even be attacking with the Phoenix. I mean, obviously, we didn't know exactly if they were going to have March last turn. Yeah, Unbreakable Formation. That's very good. That's a good one. We'll be taking a lot here. So, four toughness, four toughness. Four, four. Uh, oh, they have that five, five over there. I think I probably just need to jump the five, five. Yeah. And now we're taking uh, twelve. They gain millions of life. I shouldn't. Even, I just shouldn't even attack with the phoenix. When this is through. Go 
Guess we'll make this thing a 6-6. Six, six, so we can block the 5-5. Five, five. And of course those tokens being 2-2s two now makes my Hellkite worse. Flourish also. All right, so I don't have any blocks that save me. The least amount of damage I can take is 15. And of course, we're at 11. 15 is the least I can take. Okay, Ripjaw. And... I guess probably Brontodons also. I think I'm going to take out Collision Colossus. And maybe play Vivian instead of Domri. Yeah, I like Vivian's tick up more than Domri's. Hey, Zoe, I'm glad it's Friday also. So what did Zerf say? Okay, so Zerf said, Todd would be interested in your input of the following. A coworker and I were discussing standard today. Keep. Her position was that standard, while in a decent spot now compared to other standards, is still lacking the diversity in decks that could do well at a big tournament. I'm not quite sure I agree with the sentiment based on what I see here. I think non-meta style decks might do okay. The thing about standard is the card pool is simply not very vast and because of it it's it's very hard to it's it's really hard to build a standard that has more than like the amount of decks that we have now because like right now there's like you know probably around six decks or so that you would just not be surprised at all if it won the tournament. Um, that's just like a complete guess, like, you know, just estimate off the top of my head. And... With the limited card pool, like, you're just gonna have, like, rares and mythics that are better than other cards kind of thing. No, modern's not exclusive of what's like top tier in the tournaments. Modern's a much more vast, but it has just so many more cards as well. I was surprised our opponent didn't just, you know, adapt their growth chamber guardian, honestly. That would have been a better play for our opponent there. Modern is a format that has that does not where cards do not rotate. Cards are that are legal and modern are always legal unless they get banned. And I take out one Bronzedon, get another Vivian in here. And said cards are from 8th edition forward, which was, I don't know, 17, 18 years ago or so. I do like Wild Growth Walker a lot in this matchup. Our, 
our Wild Breath Walker met a baffling end last game. Hopefully it has a more successful fate for us this game. Don't do it. Don't do it. No baffling end. All right, no baffling end. All right, drew a bunch of lands. We are getting closer to Hellkites and Vivians. I guess Seal Away could be a thing. I wouldn't really expect Seal Away from their deck. Yeah, I wouldn't expect Seal Away at all. But I guess that could be a thing. Hmm. Um, don't think it's really worth attacking into like a, you know, if they go, go like March and then Tristani. I think I'd rather have my blockers. Dang, baffling end? Come on. I also not expecting Wow. That's uh, six lands in a row. Or no, actually seven lands in a row. Yeah, seven lands in a row. Could even be eight lands in a row. Did I keep a two lander? Yeah, actually, yeah, actually, I did keep a two lander. Yeah, it's just been eight lands so far. Yes, you can control paste the list in the chat. And Dirk, that works. You can also just when you, if you go for a donation deck, just put put the link of, of the deck in the like the donation description. That works very well, very easily as well. basically just kind of waiting for our opponent to kill us at this point. Our opponent's hand has been really strong. Stop my opponent from drawing so well. I don't know. You let me know if you ever find out. Another Luxodon? Oh, a Tribunal. They've had a really good mix of, you know, a lot of a lot of threats, 
and a lot of removal. Yeah, just an just an awesome mix. Where we drew one Phoenix and nine lands. So we've seen nine lands and a Phoenix. For our not all draw steps, because you know some of them we just explored and got lands. Those were our top ten cards were nine lands and a Phoenix. We did get red and green lands, that is true. We did have a good mix of lands. Hey, Gatsby. Hope you're having a good Friday. All right, one and one. New match. Uh, what do we just play? Mardu Angels. Mardu Angels is ready to go up on YouTube. I need to just fill out some of the info on it. Looks like my opponent's giving me time to do that. So much for the whole nine lands thing. Am I holding up? Holding up okay. Yeah, we're still going pretty strong. So we're a little over halfway through our, our 12 hour stream now. Oh, that's awesome, Timothy. Yeah, the Gruel Dinos, that was Joy's deck. That one, that one was not my build uh, there, but that's awesome. Play that to top 10 Mythic. Very nice. Come on, opponent. You can play a little faster than this. Like, this seems like an opponent that uh, is watching the stream, like what they're doing, how people are asking about that earlier. How they took that long to like have the stream load and everything. Unfortunately, we're playing Esper Control, and we have also drawn a very uh, poor part of our deck. And we are very likely losing. These are all just, you know, just a bunch of 1-3s and 1-1s. Those are not difficult for a control deck to beat at all. So thankfully they missed their lands. Oh, there's a land. I guess we'll see what we draw. Okay. So yeah, our opponent's here in chat. It's nothing I can do about it, so they value these thousand gold leagues so highly that they want to be in chat and and 
you know, watch the stream while they're playing. Oh well. That's their life. Hmm. I don't love what I have as far as options here. Go. Let's try this. Well, at least it's a little more aggressive than last time. Don't have any of like our, our cyborg cards or anything like that. Let's go with the Jade Light. So we're looking for our Planeswalkers. I mean, Spellbreaker's not bad. I'll go ahead and keep it. It's not bad. The thing that I do like about it, making the Jade Light a 4-3, makes Jade Light a, a real threat. Like, eight's a lot of damage here. They don't even get to Kai's Wrath next turn. Nah, Spencer, I don't I don't need some overlay that covers my hand for somebody stream sniping. It's just not it's just not that important. I would again I, I want I want the stream to be the best it can be for the viewers here in chat and and I'm playing with my hand open, that's okay. So we found a Domri. Really good draw here where we get to play something that doesn't add on anything to the battlefield. Per se. You call it anarchy for me. Well, so well, even if our well, opponent has Kaya's yeah. Wrath this next turn, like the Domri doesn't get swept up. Yeah, you can find Prince Ali, you can find the Gruel Dinos deck in in this the Stream Decker page. Um streamdecker.com slash decks slash Todd Stevens MTG. You can find it in there. All right, so we're going to game three. Pick me up before we are not going to be begins. on the play, though, for game three. So... <laughs> yeah, that's Domri. Minus three, do nothing. That's Domri. So, of course, it'll be tougher being on the draw. So we'll see how this works. Yeah, that's true. I did just move a lot of lands to the bottom. That's a good point. Yeah, game three is going to be hard on the draw. Like, Esper Control is just built to beat creature decks like mine. You know, with Kai's Rats and all that kind of stuff. Like, four mana sweeper is no joke. So we'll, we'll see how this goes. I'm not... You know, I'm not uh, real confident that we're going to win, but here we go. That's an easy mulligan. And they kept their hand pretty fast. 
I'm not get a card to ship to the bottom. You know, like that's that's a card that we're gonna want, but you know, we have to ship it to the bottom right now. But now it's just sitting, of course, like I was saying, at the bottom of the deck, and that's not a card that we want at the bottom of our deck. All right, that's not so bad for us. So Thief is pretty good for us. Because you know, our opponent's best card is Kaya's Wrath in the matchup, and them just having their creatures get sweeped up by... Like, basically, them playing Thief means that they're never going to play Kaya's Wrath. So that's pretty good for us. Of course, we have a decent amount of Flyers. We have our Vivians. And Gruel Spellbreaker can... Outrace Thief very easily. So certainly not scared of Thief one bit. So do I want to give my opponent Branch Walker? Probably. That's not so bad. I like the, again, like making the Jade Light pretty big. So the Kai's Wrath Balance is just a two for two trade. Points. Um So Hellkite could have been like a haste creature in case there's a Teferi. Sorry, I'm late. Let's skip to the good part. No one knows the wilds like I do. Ugh, that's a lot of lands. another phoenix next turn I guess so all right so the spellbreaker will at least hit this to a little bit so they can't can't use to fairy to tuck next turn I'm getting too old for this. So, let's see if there's another Kai's Wrath here. Hold that thought. Ha. I've seen worse. Or at least we should be able to take out their Teferi, even though our Vivians will be down. Unclear what our opponent took with Diva Sanity. One card they took over Cindervine Cindervines. The other one they took over Branchwalker Mountain. So I don't think that they have just lands. I think they'd have spells over there.
And the nice part about Spellbreaker having Hexproof is we don't have to worry about it not killing Teferi. Because it's going to kill Teferi. We will meet again. That was a little strange that my opponent left me with Vivian. Let's tear this place apart. Seems a little strange they left me with a Vivian. Guess they have another Contempt, but they could Contempt the Phoenix, too. I don't know. Alright, so they can attack Vivian. That's the plan. Okay, so you've got claws. Come to me. Attack. So that's one of their two cards, was a Hellkite. So they have four of their cards, one my one of my cards, and an insight. And we got everything out on, on the table. <sighs> Not dead yet. Another contempt. Really unfortunate for us. Definitely relying on that Vivian. We've seen a good part of the deck. Hmm. If I sit back completely with them having chemistry's inside and everything, it doesn't doesn't do me a whole lot of favors. Let's see if you're worthy. That's really bad for me. Sometimes restoration I'm having a Vivian. means retribution. That means I don't have any other Vivians in the deck. That's the last one. I'll be back, just like before. All right, they got their own Phoenix. Uh, Land War Elf. Why are you showing up here? That's definitely attacking. And yeah, we'll attack with one of these two. Down to seven. Okay. It's a weird flex, but... Okay.
I don't I don't know what we can really draw in the all these cards and tell our, our tyrant that we went down to the bottom with. We don't really have any good cards. No time for a break. I know my response right now until like the like we don't really have any any good cards. So basically, basically no, we're not going to be winning this. Um, so we know we know one of these cards is a Carnage Tyrant somewhere. And there's another Carnage Tyrant. After that Carnage Tyrant, with our Vivian Tickups, we saw our other two Hellkites. We saw our two Domrys. We're out of Vivians. Good news is our opponent likely won't Kaya's Wrath. Kaya's Wrath's really bad for our opponent. Or maybe they will Kai's Wrath. If they attack all out, it just really incentivizes my opponent to, or it incentivizes me, sorry, to, you know, make better blocks of that. Reverse. With that, um, with just that Lyra attack, it incentivizes me to get rid of one of the, the Phoenixes. The Fortunately, we're going to hit a big land pocket, likely. Because we have not seen that many lands. So we are likely going to be drawing a bunch of lands here. Unfortunately, our Vivian Tickups were not too kind to us earlier. Hurry! We do have a Carnage Tyrant somewhere in before this one. So 3, 6, 9, 10. Like 10 cards. There's a Tyrant somewhere in those 10. We need to move quickly. But they likely will have, like, them making that move means they likely have more Kai's Rats. In hand. They've used two so far. Well, that didn't pan out. You know what? I'm not done yet. Not too... Uh, a little surprisingly. So yeah, the, the Lyra didn't didn't necessarily do anything. Just played a Lyra. They got to attack for five and then wrath it away. Did make me, you know, overextend. Into the wrath. Did they just Kai's wrath again? So that's no their third. No time for a break. They have one left. All right, second Lyra is gonna do it. <clears throat> yep, we hit that land pocket that I thought we were going to. So one and two, uh, like we talked about before when we were going into that third game, I wasn't you know, real confident that we're going to be winning that. Kaiser Rath's just, you know, it's 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 some trouble. We need to hopefully take over with our Planeswalkers. Our opponent had, like, the contempts for both of our Vivians that we resolved. And uh, so that was pretty tough for us. 
Well, there we go. That was a quick, quick league there with Gruel Stompy. Didn't, yeah, didn't go the best for us there. <clears throat> All right, so if you're watching this video later on on YouTube, don't forget to hit that subscribe button over there. But thanks for watching. I'll see you for the next video.